like I don't know the Kyle story completely. So you you graduated high school, right? And then all right. So when I moved to Atlanta, I, I moved for the girl. Uh, I I went after her. I wanted to be closer to her. And uh, was this and, a girl that you dated in high school? Yes. The, it's all the same girl. Okay, then I know the girl. All yeah, right. it's all the same girl. All right. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle has had a long. Kyle long, has had a, a long off on our relationship with this one girl in particular. That when I want something, I do whatever it takes. That it, she owns his <laughs> it took me heart. 10 it would years. seem. Yeah. All right. And I whittled her down. Now, how, why uh, was she in I, Atlanta? Because uh, she, she was. She went to your high school. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we graduate high school. She moves to Atlanta because she first moves to Athens, stays there for a year, then to Atlanta. She she didn't like our small town, our small county, our small section of the state. It's not much to do. She here. wanted to be in fun. the big she, city, so she moved to Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, and she wanted all the things to come along with that. So she moves to Atlanta. I follow along. It's a, it's a, it very much uh, sort of in a weird quasi-friend zone type place. Um, I, uh, I, I get my job there selling cars. And I'm working with, um, and I make some friends at the dealership. Wow, so got. you move to Atlanta on the hope that you'll escalate to girlfriend, boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a real gamble. Yeah. I don't care. I, I, it's whatever. <laughs> Wait, were you shaking that, those dice? Were dice huh? those were, that, that's double. That's double. Those are dice and my cock, <laughs> and just rolling it and coming. This is all of them in one. Okay, and, so you uh, move to Atlanta to follow the girl on the hopes that you can escalate your yeah. relationship to boyfriend get, girlfriend. Get my job selling cars. I, I'm doing well there, loving it, kicking it, having a great time. Uh, I get an now, apartment in an apartment complex right across the street from where she lives. Not the same complex. Um, do you have roommates in this apartment? No, by myself. Oh, no. Uh, by myself. So I, I get this apartment all by myself out there. And, uh, and I'm living right across from, you know, the, the street from her complex. We're separated and everything. Are you 18? Mm, 19. Okay. 19. Uh, so the first thing that happens, it's my birthday. We're going to go out to dinner. And my apartment floods. I, uh, I had my shirt hung up on the, uh, the sprinkler, uh, ironing. Twist it, sprinkler explodes, whole apartment's destroyed, all my belongings <laughs> destroyed. They put it on my credit report, didn't let me off the hook for like eight years. They, 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 put, it was, they put a hawk report on me or something like that for damaging the apartment. It was a whole thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so people know the, the fire uh, sprinklers thing, that sometimes they have like a little red um, piece of glass that almost looks like a Christmas light. If you break that, horrible things happen. Game over, bro. <laughs> thousands of gallons in this apartment ruined the apartment so now i got nowhere to live right like of course and she's not gonna let me go live with her that's not even 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 remotely in the cards mm -hmm. uh, so i i asked my roommate or i asked my co-worker who's 24 at the time i was 19 at the time i'm like hey can i crash with you on your couch for a while till i get things figured out so i'm crashing on his couch for for maybe two or three weeks and then like our quasi friendship boyfriend girlfriend thing whatever it was Meets its end. She she breaks up with me. Tells me this thing isn't going to work. Whatever. Like it's just not going to happen. Um, then I, I I go into suicide mode. That's when I almost killed myself. Um, you know, outside her apartment that night. I've told that story a bunch of times. Um, don't kill myself. And said you know, uh, limp my it, spoiler. spoiler. <laughs> uh, hanging uh, on every word. <laughs> you know, I go I go to work and I'm just sitting there. My manager's like, "What's wrong?" He sits on the golf cart with me. He's like, "What's wrong, brother?" I just go, <laughs> start crying or whatever. And he's just like, go home, man. Come back when you're good. Come back when you're good. So like, I go back to you know my friend's apartment, and I, I literally sit there and eat peanut butter and peanut butter sandwiches and milk for like ten days until I'm like able to like collect myself together again. Watch all of Band of Brothers, every DVD that man owned. Really beefed up my film uh, knowledge during that that sad time. And, uh, and and so I'm just like, well, what am I gonna do? Like. Ten days ago, I was ready to kill myself because, like, what's the point now? You know, everything's been about getting this girl. You know, I mean, we've moved here. We've we've we've, we've done whatever it took. We've we financial hardships, whatever. You know, my parents hated this whole thing with me moving out there. You know, the whole nine, like, you know, they've cut me off financially. I'm making my own money now. I'm doing well, and I had some savings, and but 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 I'm cut off. You know, and, and it's just, it, it's it's rough. And, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go in my life. What my next step was, and I was just like, well, I'm not gonna fail. I'm not gonna turn around and go home. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a winner when I go home. Um, so I gotta put my head back down to the grindstone, and get back on this thing, and, and make it make some more money. And so that's what I did. So I, I just went back to work and, and I worked for another 
nine months until I felt like I was going home a winner and I did it that way. Or did you stay but at I, this apartment? I stayed with them the whole time, <laughs> crashing on the couch, nine and a half months. Did and they didn't rent? No, no, I didn't Oh, pay. you piece of <laughs> shit. I, I pitched in a little with the rent sometimes. I may have left them in a, in, a, in, a, in a tough spot when I left, but I did the best I could. And, you know, I always paid my part of the rent in, in any case. But when I left, you know, I'm gone and, you know, I'm not there to pay the rent anymore, so whatever. But I paid, yeah, I, I paid rent. And uh, I, I paid for my share of the food and, and, and all that stuff. But, you know, I'd occasionally eat all their fucking food. But in any case, there were these two Lithuanian motherfuckers, and it was crazy living with them because they had their all... I had never met any Europeans so before. You know, they, How did you go from living there, working at the car dealership? Then you, you moved back home, right? Yeah. So what was the, the catalyst for that? I was just done. Like, I didn't want to... You, didn't, you weren't happy? Uh, there was nowhere to go from there. Like, like I had already been promoted... I had already like gotten this far. I was making plenty of money. I was doing everything I wanted to do out there, but I just didn't enjoy being out there. The whole point of being out there was the girl. So like, the more honestly, the more I did, the better I did at my job, and the more I, that people like respected me at my job, the more every compliment I got was like bittersweet because it was like, why doesn't she see this about me? Why doesn't she care about this? Like everybody around me is kissing my ass and telling me that I'm like the best at this and the best at that. Like, oh my god, how did you do this? She doesn't care, and it was just really bittersweet, and I didn't like it. And I just wanted to get out of anything that reminded I, me of I'll her. I'll tell you, I've met her a couple of times, and she just seems like a normal person to me. Ah, she's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just a regular person, I swear to you. I, I, I mean, I've known her longer than you have. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, I dated her for another two years. Um, I, ca I came back, got her back, like, uh, four years ago, dated her for two years. Um, uh, three years ago, dated her for two years, and she broke up with me last year, and... And I can't. And Woody was like, "What's wrong?" I went, she broke up with me. Is and, that the know, one that hit you really hard? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I cried for for you know the last for like eight months or something like that. Um, Would you? Yeah. Whoa. What are you gonna do? That's cry for eight months. You know. Yeah, you cry for eight you months. Do. I don't cry anymore. Uh, you know, not in public or anything like, like I used to. Like I get get back home, get the cry blanket out, wrap it around my head, just sob. <laughs> As you do, yeah. As, I mean, yeah. what else? It's a we combo like guy. sand protection turban thing. No, that really is a sad. That's not even a happy story. You know, there's no happy ending to that. No, one. That's, that's just sad. kind of a, a sad uh, chapter in my life where like I feel like I wasn't good enough to uh, uh, to to be the me that I should have been, and I missed out on somebody who was really great. Um, were you going places and they were like reminding you of her? Like you go into Fridays and be weeping. Oh, oh uh, we used to get any tizers. <laughs> oh my god, a thousand things like that. A thousand things like that. Like uh, it, Woody asked one time. I, I was telling Woody, I was like, we watch Game of Thrones together. And he's like, has this bitch ruined Game of Thrones for you? <laughs> that'll be the last straw. And I'm just like. No, nah, I mean, Jon Snow's pretty sweet, though, you know? <laughs> it's funny, because I'm Team Kyle on this thing, right? Whatever that is. <laughs> no, I hope so. right, well, it, it's a tricky thing to be sometimes, because it, it's, you know, it'd be easy if Team Kyle was, you know what? F fuck her. Fuck her with a knife. A rusty one. Jagged. You know? Screw that girl. I hate her. But that's not how he feels, right? Team Kyle is, you know, it, it's actually, it's, I don't know. I'm not great at this. Like, it, it's a... I, yeah, and and I will. Yeah, it's in so all, so much worse than an angry breakup is a breakup where like you're longing for it and thinking of all the possible ways you could have saved it. It'd be so much easier just to be oh, like, I did my bitch, best to like to hold it, it together at the end too, and just like to no avail. Uh, How long did you know that it was tumbling down? Like, was there um, quite a bit of play up? Uh no, no. Well, I mean, I knew it wasn't going that well. There, and were, there had been a, a, a couple of stumbling blocks, but I thought things were pretty cohesive. And then there was a week period where, like, I did a couple stupid things, um, and then instead of going to, like, fix it, I did some more stupid things. I feel like you're telling it wrong, and I don't want to give it any, anything away, so I'll, I'll allow you to. But I don't think it's what you did. I think it's what you didn't do. Like, it, someone might hear you did stupid things and think that you were, like, you know, unfaithful or, like, like that, those yeah, kind of stupid I mean, yeah, things. Well, it, you know, she had seen where I'd been communicating with this other girl uh, through email. Shouldn't have been doing that, but this—it's it's, you know—the chick had been contacting me, and her 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 butt was just so big, hmm. just so big. What are you and, gonna do? And, you know, You're not gonna not was, talk to her. It was, it was, it was just correspondence. It was just kind of like, well, what do you like to do? What you? And I and I'm just like, well, what can I do to that big butt of yours? And you know, you know, it's just like that kind of talk, you know. 
And, and she saw that on my, uh, my, uh, my, my computer and my email, and, and that really took things down a, a, a rough course. You didn't tell me about that. Can I say what you did tell me? I don't want to ruin anything away. I don't, Probably. Uh, what, I, I'm going to because I don't think it's awful. Okay. Um, she wanted more attention, and Kyle didn't give her the attention she wanted. Sure, that was part of it, yeah. Um, and, and, and by attention, it was just like, it, we, we talk about the languages of love. And mm -hmm. I feel like we were also hitting on different ones. Like to me, a big one is like, uh, you know, like gifts and, and things that I might provide for you and places I might take you and things I might pay for. Like they, that's kind of how I show my love in a lot of ways. And I feel like she needed more, um, I don't know, more, more of one of the other ones, not necessarily physical. Touch, like words of, affirmation words of affirmation is one. Quality time yeah. is one. Um, I don't know. I don't want to dissect my, my, my pitiful relationship from last year. I've got a new girlfriend who's, who's just absolutely gorgeous, best, uh, best looking girl I've dated in, in quite a while. And, um, and I, I like her a lot. And, uh, and you know, that, that's where things are now. But yeah, you know, I, uh, I still feel bad about that whole thing. That was a real rough time. Both times that every time, like that girl has been responsible for like all of my biggest lows in my whole life, I think. Like, like at Is least she responsible like, for a lot of your highest highs. Yeah, yeah, that too. Like, like some of my fondest memories are like trips I went on with her, and like going to Six Flags with her when we were teenagers, and uh, you know, just like like making out on her couch or something. And uh, I feel like your current girlfriend is a better fit. Now, no girl's perfect, but like, and I, I'm cautious about all the things I say. But um, for example, the the love of your ex—that's what I should call her. Um, she didn't like hunting. She didn't like, uh, you know, I don't think she was particularly into guns. She didn't like some of the things. She liked guns. She, liked guns. It was, okay. uh, she, was, um, she was a vegetarian, and she didn't like um, yes. um, aspects of, uh, she didn't like when I used the pig as the target and stuff like that, um, um, eh, that sort of thing. Uh, none of that stuff bothered me. Like, like I was fine. Those like, to me know. seem like some pretty core uh, value system mismatches. No, I agreed with her in a lot of ways, like, like uh, on that stuff. I really do. Like, I feel bad for those animals, and, and I had no problem eating uh, what she ate. She also, she had to be on a diet for medical reasons for a while, <coughs> and uh, it was it was virtually a vegan diet. And um, I mean, there would be gr it. It sounds weird to describe. I can't remember what it's called, but um, there was grilled chicken involved. Um, that, that we would like, that was what we had to cheat with at the end because there was like nothing else for her to eat. There was like eight things. It was like quinoa. And like pepper, <laughs> and like, really? That's oh. it. That's the only. But but it was really only like a handful of things. But I didn't I I didn't mind eating her very restrictive diet. Like you know, she was a great cook, and we'd cook. I don't want to get into this whole thing, but, um, you know, it, that was the that was the same girl that uh, that I had the almost suicide with before. Hey, this time around, I didn't think about killing myself. So there's that. Hey, That's great. by the third breakup, I won't even feel it's it. Funny. Right? He told yeah. <laughs> me, he specifically said, like, you know, I'm not suicidal. And, I'm, and in my head, I'm like, how'd that get on the table? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Why? Because Why? last time, you know, I was. Last time I was like, well, let's just do this down here. And then I was like, but she'll find me. Or at least, you know, the ambulance will be down here and, and she'll ask her neighbor, what's this ambulance doing down here? And they'll say, oh, some guy shot himself in the in the parking deck last night. He's... He's over there in that black Acura TL. And like, you know, then I ruined her life. And I was like, well, I'll just suffer through my life so that hers will be a little easier. And that was literally what I did for a long time. And it's like admitting defeat to do that right then. I would have been happy to. I, I was defeated. I, I'd have been happy with defeat. I, I, I honestly kept living to make her life easier there for a long time. And think of the life that you would have skipped. Like, yeah. There's been some cool shit. You don't know. If I'd killed I killed myself, maybe I'd have been the field. emperor of like Neptune or something. We don't know what kind of reincarnations You're... out there. I could have done some real cool shit. I feel like up houses. You, and... You've got a twenty-sided D and D die, and you roll it, and you got like a nineteen or twenty, and you're like, oh, probably the next one would be even higher. Yeah. yeah. No way. I just keep fucking you've rolling. Because you got all your charisma modifiers that couldn't get any higher. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Taylor. Yeah. Wow, that means so you know much what? to you. I'm glad. I don't. I don't want you to kill yourself. You've got nice charisma modifiers too. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sad uh, talk. That was a, I'm that was the gay movie. one here, guys. Me. <laughs> okay. yeah. Sorry, I was encroaching. <laughs> yeah. uh, lower my percent back down to its normal level. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, I, I like that little peek into your life, Kyle. I didn't know really hardly any. You've mentioned that stuff to me like briefly before, but never, never much. 
it's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then it's, you moved back home because you it just nothing was. I guess you felt yeah, like and you, then I, you, you and got then, your like, achievement. As I was moving, yeah, I, 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 I didn't want to be out there anymore. And then, like, as I moved, I hurt my back, and I was literally on the couch for, like, uh, like four weeks, got real fat, um, and then just got real depressed and didn't want to do anything, didn't want to work at, at the dealership, didn't want to sell cars, didn't want any part of that, uh, and ended up um, just working with my dad for a long time, just really enjoyed. I felt like uh, like Rambo whenever he, like, He's done killing in Vietnam, and he's like he's like out there with those monks. I really felt like I was doing that for a while, just working with my dad, like out in the field, and just trying to like get my head straight after that whole thing with with the girl, and uh, and you know eventually that kind of leads into playing way too many video games to deal with the pain, uh, and getting real good at those video games. Cod four. Uh, top four what? I said cod four. four. Oh 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 yeah yeah cod yeah and then you know getting. Uh, deciding that professional poker might be an option for me, and I did pretty well at that. And uh, I bought my first gaming console with my professional poker winnings, and uh, kind of started playing more. So there was a time when I would play poker like all night and play video games all day, and like do like zero work. And uh, and so yeah, like like that. It, it's it all comes full circle, you know. If I don't go through the depressing, awful time with her, almost killing myself and all then I don't end up swinging from helicopters and blowing up houses and flying drones and being Call of Duty commercials and fucking, like, half of Twitter or whatever I did. Um, so, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta hurt to feel good. You gotta, there's gotta be some lows so you appreciate the highs. Uh, so, I, I'm, I'm happy with the way things have gone so far. At least I know what it feels to, uh, to really love something a lot and, uh, and, and how intense it is to lose it. I feel like those are intense feelings that I've felt. I don't feel like everybody gets that the full, uh, the full spectrum of intensity of horrible, horrible lows and and super duper highs. But I think I've had both. I'm just getting started. I'm not even thirty yet. I know. Yeah. But it, thirty to forty probably goes way faster than twenty to thirty, oh, right, Woody? I, if I make it to forty, next year's gonna be fucking crazy. I got some cool ideas. <laughs> I'm gonna get that ejector seat out. Did I tell you about that ejector That's seat what my you buddy said. has? Yeah, you said that that would, could actually paralyze you. Well, they said compress my spine. I mean, yeah, six of one, right? You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm or, what I'm, I'm like six one, six one and a half. Like I could do six foot flat, whatever. <laughs> you might, you know, probably make you look broader too. Oh, I'd shoulder like that. Action, fill yeah. out those those shirts. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I got some. You'd have that squat <laughs> wrestler's neck. <laughs> look more muscular. Be more yeah. difficult yeah. to choke. I say go oh, for that, it. That is true. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, that's um that that's a, that was just a real sad story. What do you want you put me in such a bad mood? I think it was Bring a really good my, segment on the show. PKA painful, Golden Age right here. Painful memories and Dude, we're we're oh. al- almost 3 hours into the show and it's been all gold start to three I've quarters. enjoyed the show so far. <laughs> start to 3 quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Woody, I've been a fan of your channel since the summer when my friend linked me to your video about your suicide attempt. I've been suffering from clinical depression since 2008 and have had a really rough time. I know this seems like a lot of pressure that you might feel outside of your element of help, but just keep in mind, I don't go overboard anymore and my depression is healing just slowly. Now, you don't have to answer or read, you don't have to answer this or read this. However, I look up to you because of everything, you are everything I wish to be. Yikes. Now, here you have an amazing wife and two wonderful children. You're great with tools and offer real advice. He thinks high, more highly of me than I think of me. But anyway, yeah. I'm 19 years old, and I'm on antidepressants due to my depression going extreme. I recently attempted to cut myself and overdose multiple times. Mm. It, was a, it was about a girl. So, uh, long story short, I love the girl I loved was raped twice, and I did everything to help her return to normal. I was friend-zoned multiple times, and she has a boyfriend we no longer talk. I'm so depressed. I wish I could sleep forever from this nightmare. It sucks. For the record, by the way, we no longer talk. She called me up and said sorry for everything, but I don't believe her. I haven't picked up her call since. I can't escape this depression. I feel lonely all the time. My therapist didn't do anything, and my antidepressants only do so much work. Help me. Nothing feels right anymore. I talk to as many people as possible, but it doesn't help. I can't sit down and play a game. I can't sit down and read. I can't do any of my university readings, and I have zero confidence in myself. I feel worthless and pathetic. I'm working out every so often, so that helps, but there's always those depressing moments. 
I'm sorry for rambling, and if this is too long, I'm sorry. But if you don't want to reply or look at this post, that's perfectly fine. You're not responsible to do anything. If you want any more information, I guess you could ask. Not like I'm doing anything. Can I take this? Yeah. Um, I broke up. I broke up with a girl that I'd known for a really long time about four or five years ago. I think I've told this story to Woody before, but um, I was in her apartment and we broke up, and I was I was crying my eyes out, and I like got all my shit, and I went downstairs to my car, and I was as I was walking down to my car, I was planning on shooting myself when I got to the car because my my gun was in my car. I was like, when I get down there, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill myself. And I got down to the car, and uh, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't. And I look in the back seat, and there's a big bag of her shit. And I'm like, yep, I'm killing myself. So uh, so I get the gun, and, and I'm going to kill myself. And uh, and then I think, well, she's going to come down tomorrow, and she's going to find me in my fucking car when my, when my, when my brain's blowed out. I'm like, I can't do that to her. I was like, I, was like, I love her too much to do that to her, you know? That's, that's why I'm killing myself because I love her so much. I, I can't do that. So I'm like, I'll, I'll go home and kill myself. I'm like, all right, let's go home. So I go home, and I'm like, all right, it's time to kill myself now. I'm, I'm like, well, now my roommates are going to come home and find me. What the fuck? Where am I going to go kill myself? So I'm like, all right, I'll kill myself tomorrow. We'll go to the park. It'll be a nice day. So I, uh, the next day, I was too lazy to kill myself. Not going to lie. So um, I sat there, and, my, and, and I was like, dude, I'm not going to work today. I, my, I worked with my roommate at, at, a, at a car dealership, and I, I was like, so I'm just sitting there on the couch, and uh, and he had this huge library of DVDs, so I started watching them, and I watched every DVD that he owned, including the entire Band of Brothers um, collection. He, I watched 60 DVDs before I left that couch. Uh, I, I lost I lost 13 pounds um, because all I ate in like three a three day period was a glass of milk and a peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter sandwich. And uh, after that experience, I felt better. I, I I think maybe like you just need to get some perspective on the whole thing before you make any rash decisions. Um, and and think about how like hurting yourself would hurt the people around you. And um, and always remember that, that there's always another day. And Band of Brothers is awesome. You might want to watch that. That cheered me right up. <laughs> I have a question. I have a question, Kyle. Yep. Did your friend have the gun with the wind box set? No. no oh, God damn it. That no, would have made I, everything way better. That would, I'd have blew my brains out on the couch if he did. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this might be bad advice, but I, I'd say give up on that girl that you're going after. Because if she's went up, went through three different guys, she's obviously really good looking, and she's pretty much superficial. And you've already ascended into what you call the friend status. Did Once you go into different the, guys, did I miss it? She, he said she got raped twice. I don't know if it's by the same person, but oh, okay, I, but, yeah. And I, but I'm I'm just assuming it's two different guys there. But you've ascended into what you call the friend category, and once you get there, you you're basically considered harmless. It's kind of like guys in wheelchairs. Girls will flirt with a guy in a wheelchair because they consider them non-threatening. Yep. And you're in that same category. Um, my best bet for you, buy a hooker. I'm, I'm dead, I'm dead right, so that's a short term <clears throat> solution or a long term. No, no, no. The, the fact is, buying a hooker and getting your whistle wet will make you forget about a lot of things like girls and make you make you less stuck up on, on certain aspects like that. What you if know, you get that's some a personal STG? thing there? Like, so I'm thinking about that. Right? Like, if if he were to go that route, and I wouldn't judge him. You know, what if afterwards, you know, he has this view of himself that's pretty low like what if afterwards he's like man what am i doing here this isn't where i want to be like it's not the the happy experience with the the glow afterwards that you uh, are predicting it to be what if it's this like moment of i don't want to say shame animals and heat project you know but but yeah well you know i can just picture him sitting on the edge of the bed thinking oh wow uh, I, where well, here, I? well here's here's the advice to that Nothing ever, no foundation ever built upon happiness ever lasts. You, happiness comes in second samples. I mean, nothing you ever build with the, on the, on the foundation of happiness will ever last in your life. You can build a marriage on based on happiness; it will never last. You have to be able to deal with the person for an extent. That's why marriages has such a high fail rate today. That people are happy when they get married, but once once they learn where they have to actually live with each other, they fall apart and they just don't want to deal with each other. If you if you have a more of like a consistent basis. Or more of like a serious relationship, your marriage is going to succeed a lot more than just being happy for that moment of time and making rash decisions. I, I never base your life upon is this going to make me happy. Like Woody probably wasn't happy going to school, for example, like doing all those degrees, but he's probably happy where he's at now that he can he can support his family and all. You kind of see what I'm saying? And by incredibly expensive table saws <laughs> that his that his wife almost destroyed. 
<laughs> with their awful driving. Um, uh, oh, oh, so like my thoughts on depression. Now, I'm, I'm not trained on this, but I've got experience with it, so that's just one person. But uh, for me, what, what the depression was really about was a future that I didn't think was very bright. And uh, I, I wonder if he's in the same mental spot where he's like, man, you know, this girl's not digging me. Life isn't going my way. You know, what's the deal here? I can't find happiness. And, uh, you know, if he sticks it out, if he just keep plugging away, he'll, he will find things that do make him happy. He will find some success in life. He'll find something that captures his interest and, uh, and things will get better. Uh, this girl broke his heart. Yeah. Girls are known to do that. Um, you know, and it, it's like that whole many more fish in the sea thing sounds so cliche when you hear it. It sounds so worthless, but, um, it's so not, you know, there are, there are so many girls out there who, who can, you know, be your life partner, who can be on your side, uh, through thick and thin that, uh, you know, you just start, uh, you know, and guess what? Trolling. New ones are created every day. Oh, yeah, he, to throw that he's 19. <laughs> I don't think hey, I, I wouldn't give that troll. away, dude. I would say... I met somebody who had like a husband that was 51 and she was like 26. And I was like, dude, he was like 20 by the time you were born. <laughs> I wouldn't throw that yeah. out the window. I don't think anyone girl who's going to act like that or at least not give you the time of day is, is worth that much turmoil. I mean, you just eventually have to find someone who will give you the time of day because they are out there. There's a ton of them. There's got to be one eventually you'll stumble across that's going to be even better than what you're trying to get now. Yeah, like, what are you looking for in a girl? Like, we could probably hook you up with somebody. How, how we go hook him up with somebody, Kyle? We don't even know where he lives at. <laughs> that doesn't well, matter. Well, I know girls around email. the country. Yeah. That's... Like, that's one of, the, AK, one of my issues. With a lot of times. I, I, I think relationship's the last thing he needs at this point in his life. I think he needs companionship, but he doesn't need, like, a like a relationship with a girl. Like, he needs to be able to feel good about himself. He needs, like, a like a group. Like, um maybe, like, a YMCA would be pretty much the ideal, you know, place for him so to some be. Kind of, really needs some kind of, like, Some place where he can feel group. like he's part of a team. Like, like you and, don't want to go to, like, one of those meetings in a circle or anything. But if you just know, had, like, a group of friends you go bowling with and you're drunk, or, a basket, or, like, play basketball or something like that where you yeah, feel like you're important to somebody else. That's a really, really good idea, Wings. I love that. You know, and, and so, like, people have heard me talk about sports before. You don't have to be great just to play. First of all, like, let's say you're a small guy. Like, man, there's, there's sports out there for you. There's, like, a wrestling team or whatever. It's, he's 19, so he's, he's out of high school. Um, but you, you can jump in a men's basketball league or volleyball league or, uh, you know, there are adult lacrosse leagues filled with people yeah. who don't have tons of lacrosse experience just like you. Yeah, what you want to get into is like a uh, what? What is it when it's like men and women? It's like co-ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you want to get into like co-ed volleyball league? Yeah, the, soccer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah I but, want, um, want that. Does anybody know one? Co-ed beach volleyball. Let, let me go on about this a little bit longer. That it's a fun thing to do, and, and what Wing said was really, really neat. In that, uh, like, you'll be in this locker room and you'll be important to somebody. You know, after you're there like five, seven weeks in a row. You are part of that team. You have a bond with these guys. You have a common goal. And, uh, you know, you're joking, you're goofing, you're whatever, saying nasty things about each other in lots of fun, in a fun spirit. And, uh, yeah, man, it, it, getting into a group like that and, and forming some relationships, that's, you know, that's where happiness comes from, right? Your relationships with other people. I talked to a guy today who's having a rough time. He's um he's like dealing with alcoholism and uh I won't use your name, buddy, but uh, you know, thinking about you. Uh he was dealing with alcoholism and he's on antidepressants <laughs> and he's on ADHD medicine. Ooh, that's a dangerous thing. That's what I told him. He's, he's depressed and he's he's not super duper fit and um, um he's not in a place where he can like use marijuana to kind of because I, I was like, you know, like look, I'm not a doctor and maybe this isn't the best advice coming from a fucking felon, but like <laughs> Marijuana really helps checks a lot of the boxes of the things you you have issues with. And he's like, yeah, that's not a, it. Really does, I, you know. But I'm not. I can't like where I live and uh, and. Uh, but we talked for like a I don't know twenty thirty minutes today about like how to like. Told him you needed to like. I was like, I'm not gonna tell you to cut down on the alcohol because I know that's hard. That's the crutch that you're leaning on right now. That's keeping you from mm -hmm. falling down. But like 
maybe like talk to your doctor about some of the drug interactions and like try to cut out like the because he's on um what's that antidepressant that wings was on i was also on it at one prozac wellbutrin um uh zoloft uh, i don't know l something mate li- li- wait lithium no no no, not, not lithium a, that's an antipsychotic uh, <laughs> um oh the anyway. with an l uh lunesta no. no, no, that's that, sleeping. That's sleeping. <laughs> I don't know. I just... Lipo, lipo team. Lip, it's not Lipitor because that's the heart medicine. In any case, you know, he was on the antidepressant that uh, that Wings was on, and it, it was the one that I was on for a little while. And the reason I was on it, by the way, was um, part of my defense. Lexapro. Be, Lexapro. Yeah, part of my defense uh, in court was going to be that I was taking the marijuana um, to like self treat myself for uh, for depression and PTSD. So I, I went and got diagnosed with depression and PTSD, and they prescribed the um, – say it one more time. L- Lexapro. Lexapro. I don't know why I can't remember that. Uh, and, uh, and so I took that for a number of months, and that's, that's that shit I went cold turkey off of because it was making me I, – I describe it like this. It's like for someone whose like happiness level stays at a one to three, it's awesome because now we're going to slide that bar. It's not going to get wider, though. We're just going to slide the one to three over here so that you live between four and six. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you're never going to be happier than a six. The good thing is now you're never sadder than a four. But and and if you're like going through an an awful time in your life, that's a really good thing. That, That that's a crutch to lean on. Stay between four and six because you might fucking off yourself if you're between one and three. You might drop down to negative one and that's game over for you. But I didn't have that problem. And I just felt like, God damn it. I haven't been in an eight in months. And it's because of this fucking pill. Like, yeah. like I, I'm not taking joy in life anymore. And it's because of this fucking pill. Like there's enough stress already with this like trial looming over me and everything. Being at a four or five or six all the time is just dreadful. And so I went cold Turkey on that shit. That's when I was getting those like brain jolts. Um, I was about but, to say cold oh, Turkey is often not recommended for Lexapro. It is, 100% not recommended, and I didn't give a fuck. I wanted off. It took me okay. about a month to, like, get through the side effects because it takes a while to, like, bleed out of your system. It's one of those drugs no that you one build has up. ever described a brain jolt or a brain flash to me in a way that I get it. It's like, you ever, you ever like, if, 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 if the lights came on and quickly you were like, oh, but then that fades away, that but in your brain. It's 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 like your brain gets like like that can't be good like, for you. It, no, it, it feels awful. <laughs> it, it felt like a small electrical shock that went that was like in my brain, but I felt go through my whole nervous system, like down my shoulders into my fingers. And it was just like, Zoom. and I'm like, ah, oh, that was un- that was very uncomfortable. And then it would slowly fade away. And then you would get another one like ten minutes later. And that happened continuously <clears throat> all the fucking time Jeez, for my. weeks. It was so it, really it's like every 10 minutes or it'd be like every 10 minutes, three times. Was, and then that might be that day. No, it was frequent. It was like several times an hour, like, like three or four times an hour, at least it, it, it would just jolt. And you'd be like, Oh, that felt really oh. uncomfortable. Right. Right. Then I did not like that. And then it's like, all right, now we're good. Now we're good. It, it was just like every now and then someone was hitting your dog shot collar or something like that. Not that intense, not necessarily painful, just very uncomfortable and uh, an off disorienting maybe disorienting to some extent, but only briefly. Like I, I it wasn't like you're going to be driving and like go off the road or anything. No, you're right just, back at it. Yeah. You're right back at it. But um, it was awful going off that stuff cold turkey. Um, and and I he said that he tried to quit and it was like you know like three days into it and he was having the same thing I'm describing. He's like I had to go right back on and I'm just like. I don't know, man. Um, but but I don't know. I, I I hope I helped him out a little bit. I told him, you know, get out, do that ten minute walk after every meal because just doing a little bit of cardio every day um, and getting your insulin resistance in in check can prevent some of the fluctuations in mood and like and. Uh, but the alcohol mixed with the, the ADHD me- medicine mi- mixed with that antidepressant and he's on some other stuff too is uh, didn't sound good to me. So this is my recipe for depression. I hand it out all the time. And I think I'm on target with this and it it overlaps a lot with yours. Three pieces, three, three ingredients in this recipe. The first is some sort of fitness element, ideally in sunshine, right? And we'll take sunshine. We'll take fitness. If we do both at the same time, that's super awesome. I don't care what it is. Fucking go jump in an outside trampoline. This will be part 
of your recipe for depression. The second one, relationships, family, friends, except you can get that stuff sort of fixed. You know, a, a lot of happiness and sense of uh, well-being comes from your interactions with other people. So your family, your friends, if you get those relationships sort of reignited, that's good. Outdoor fitness, family relationships. The last one, some kind of sense of accomplishment would be great. That could be going to school. That could be, I don't know, just achieving anything. And uh, you do those three things and you're probably out of depression. Yeah, he's in a tough spot, right? Because they, um, where he is, there's I think there's a little bit of a thing with COVID. And also, mm -hmm. like, uh, he works from home um, and, and does his, like, uh, classes um, from home. So that allows him to drink without any, like, overwatch. You know, you go to work smelling like vodka. They're like, oh, ho, ho, mm -hmm. we're going to need to fix this. You go to school smelling of vodka. They're like, what are you doing, Tommy? But, like, you can be at home, like, you know, teleconferencing to work and to school, and they can't smell the gin on your breath or whatever your uh, beverage of choice is, and you can just get away with it. I think that's that's part of his problem. There's no real accountability there. And alcohol is a crutch that's very easy to lean on, you know, like, like it's, it's yeah, so socially it's acceptable. Everywhere. It's everywhere and it's effective, you know, like, like if you're mm -hmm. feeling like shit, you're depressed, you're bored and you just want something that makes your existence like a little bit more tolerable, shit, a glass of vodka will do it. But you're always It'll chasing rock. it then because like with hangovers and so, like you're borrowing happiness from the next day. And that only like reinforces the cycle he's in. And doing Trump. that on antidepressants is like genuine, like you're fucking your neurochemistry there. Like they even say like if you're taking antidepressants, SSRIs in particular, I don't know if I think Lexapro is, it's like do not over drink on this. Like because you're going to basically beat what it's doing and it's, you know, you've basically trained your brain to only release feel good chemicals with this one specific stimulus. And so like you're taking it from the four to six that like where it would be, where it's still kind of miserable, not that fun. And like now, even with it, you're one to three. And now you take like the pills or, or the alcohol out and like you're just in a very, very delicate place. That, that's sad. Hopefully one of the problems okay. with depressions is the things that fix depression are the least attractive things to you, right? Like if you're depressed, and what really feels good is alcohol and dumbass Woody's over there telling you to jump on an outdoor trampoline. Dude, that, that's not what you feel like doing, but it is good for you. It, if you just fucking do it, even though it's not what you feel like doing. Yeah. I think baby steps that like, like put, okay. put, put some fucking headphones on. No, I'm not saying that what you're saying is too far, but like put some fucking headphones on, put some music on you like, and, and do that 10 minute walk out in the sunshine um, and then like, yeah, come back no. and you're just going to feel so good. Then take a shower after that. Like anytime I, anytime, like I'm feeling like lazy or whatever, and I actually get up and I do the thing, whatever that is lifting cardio or just, you know, coming in, like <laughs> doing whatever, you know, like cleaning my house, then like that shower that I take after that. And then like, it is just, I'm like, Holy fuck. I'm glad we got out of the goddamn bed, did the thing and took a shower. God, I feel good. Oh, yeah. I feel so clean and like, like I, I like, like just sweating out like a little bit of like sweat. Just it, it feels like you're, it feels like you're removing toxins that that were just making you a piece of shit. I love mm -hmm. this image he's showing. You know what you could add? Changing your sheets. It's fucking amazing to like climb into <laughs> a made bed with clean sheets. It's boys. It's a change genius. those sheets at least twice a month. Okay, it's gonna if you guys got some acne going on on your face or something it's because your pillowcase is nasty that's a big part of it you got to wash your face twice a day got to change that pillowcase throw a towel on it like what he talked about before if you need to you know on your pillowcase but the but cheap, you gotta have you clean sheets people sometimes yeah clean sheets clean pillowcases nobody wants to fuck you in your rank bed um and uh and you're not gonna feel good in there those clean sheets feel so good nice crisp clean sheets i just yeah. i'm i'm stressed out hearing how much money that you lost from losing your twitch partnership like yep. holy every time shit. i get those emails would that come in and I, like i just got one today because i still get like some weird residual subscribers that are really old it's like oh you got paid 100 dollars today and it's like oh cool like five months ago that would have said like you know twenty three thousand dollars, and that money is just completely evaporated in thin air it's a it's a little stressful for sure yeah. i'm just 
So oh, the, the fact that you that don't sucks. seem that stressed is what boggles me. I'm like, he lost two hundred and forty thousand dollars a year in income, or more. Okay, well, well, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. We don't have to like fucking say it out like that. Okay? You know, I'm start multiplying oh, numbers Christ. with oh, other my numbers. Bad, my bad. He lost twenty he grand a month. In or four years. He's probably going to be working into an early grave now. Oh my goodness. Like, <laughs> you I said twenty grand, now. twenty-three grand, and twenty-four <laughs> grand this on. far. I say, <laughs> all right, my. I'm, I'm the crazy one. Dozens of dollars a year. <laughs> yeah. And, and, he's, I think, and he's like, yeah, yeah, it was kind of like a kick in the pants. But, you know, I'm fine. And I'm like, I mean, it sucks. But, like, I have, a, I have a really lucky background for coming into this. My life before streaming was fucking shit. Like, I was doing, like, fucking 13-day stretches, like, every other Sunday off, cleaning carpets, like, making, like, 1500 to 2000 a month or whatever. So, like, I'm incredibly blessed to do what I do. Um, I've always been kind of like, a, all right, well, this sucks. What can we do to fix it and move forward? And I'm a very, like, forward-moving kind of person because it's all you can do, you know? I was very stressed the day it happened. I drank a lot, had a big panic attack, whoosh, sorted all my feelings out. But then, yeah, day, day two, it's time to yeah, figure Did out what we're going to do. you literally have a panic attack? Panic attack? Yes. Like the, wow, can you talk about it? Like, what? what is... Did you fall to the ground like that kind of panic attack? Um, well, I don't know how big do we want to go into this. Um, it's really, really hard to explain. Um, Kyle gets those too, so he'll understand yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, I go oh, unconscious. He, yeah, he passed oh, out in, in the courtroom. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, no, I, well, that was a different courtroom, just to be clear. That was when I was 20. This has happened many 21. Times. Yeah, I, I went down in a couple of courtrooms. Sometimes you just drive by. He's like a fainting goat. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, no, it, the, the incident Taylor's talking about is when um, it's like, I don't know what it's called, maybe arraignment or something like that. It's like the first part of like federal uh, court when they're like reading out all of the uh, charges and I'd I hadn't heard some of, some of them before. And I was just <laughs> like, and I certainly hadn't heard them come out of the, I'd had, I'd heard them come out of my lawyer's voice. who was like, oh yeah. And there's, then there's this thing. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's, that's getting squashed right away. And then there's this thing. We talked to ATF. They're like, you know, if it were me, I'd go to court on that. Cause that one's bullshit they don't so don't worry about that and then there's this little thing and this little thing and the maximum for those are this and that and i'm just like, all right so that's very calming and then you get to court and the prosecutor is like and this and that and the other while doing this and the and then it just keeps going for like eight more charges <laughs> and i like whisper to my lawyer i'm about to go unconscious you've got 60 seconds to get me a chair <laughs> nice very nice uh, and he's like, can we get a chair? <laughs> <laughs> he just fell over. Is that, is that how it went down? Did they get you a chair? They got me a chair. They got me a chair. I stayed conscious, but I needed the chair. <laughs> Fanning yourself. So yeah, you're among at least one. I've never had a, a pass out like that. It sounds terrifying mm -hmm. and awful. Was it something like that that you experienced that day? Um, it's kind of weird. Up until I was like, I'm not, not trying to derail too much. Up until I was 30, I've never had any mental issue ever in my life. I've never had anxiety, depression, anything like that. I'm just a rock solid, stable mind. Um, and then when I was 30, I decided, oh, wow, people talk about mushrooms. Let's try like a fuck ton of these. And after that, I've had some problems. And one of those was that I experienced oh. a panic attack, which led to me being able to experience more. So when I experience a panic attack, it's it's really hard to explain. Um, or maybe it's not. Maybe normal feeling sense. I've never felt like terror in my life. Life. Like generally, I feel um, when something bad happens, I usually feel like a nervous excitement. Um, and it usually like propels me forward. Like I want to do something like, oh, cool, whatever. Um, but I guess when I have a panic attack, it's just um, it's this feeling of absolute and total certainty that you're about to die. I don't know why or how that's just like, and it's hard to explain what that feels like because generally when you associate like near death, like if I'm in my car and like a truck tries to merge into me, like the adrenaline will get pumping and I'll be like, Ooh, you know, brakes, whatever. And I, you're very, very excited. This is not like that kind of excitement at all. It's just a very depressive, horrible feeling that mm -hmm. like starts to go through your body that like, fuck, everything is over. Um, and I think my, my biggest fear at the time was that I know how inefficient Twitch is and how many different institutions exist inside Twitch. And I wasn't sure because the departnering came from the legal team. I didn't know if there was a permaban working its way through the mm -hmm. other part of the system. So I was kind of in limbo there because I wasn't sure if a big ban was coming. And that, that, that uncertainty is something that is really stressful for all humans. Yeah. Right? Nobody likes uncertainty. Oh, of course. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. it's your uh, fight or flight system being out of whack and it, it just goes to the max and kind of it's, it, it can't do either. Like, like, like I, I have some panic attacks where I'm able to like use some breathing techniques and kind of like focus and pull myself like right the, the ship and pull out of it. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, sometimes it's like, we're going down, we're going down, everyone brace for impact. Like, like I need to find a couch or the floor quickly because like I have passed out and like mm-hmm. you, normally when you trip and fall, like you break your fall. But when you go unconscious, you just collapse like a house of cards. So like yeah. I fall on, on like concrete before one time and just like fucked my elbow up and like, you like, die. like dude, falling you from die. Dead height is deadly. Yeah, yeah, I fell like from uh, what height? I didn't hear the head word. height. Head like height, just six head feet. Height. Just hitting your head on the ground, you're fucked. Yeah. It's not Especially uncommon. Well, the, the ground might be in trouble for me. It, fighters, yeah. <laughs> they can get hurt because they collapse in a bad way, right? Like you're not supposed to land on your shoulder like that or bend your knee the wrong way. And if you're just mm-hmm. out, like knocked out, like a fighter would be, they often like bust an ACL, even though it was a hit yeah. to the chin. Mm-hmm. You fall like, like Tom Segura video where he just Ooh. becomes a crumpled spider. Oh God, I could, I could, I could see that video in my head. It was such a bad injury. I think when you get knocked on like a concussion, I think that when you get knocked out, I think your your body has a response where you do a particular thing where you yeah. stiffen up fencing or something. Response. It's, yeah, yeah. That's why you see like when people get knocked out, they just like go down and they're just like like looking very inhuman, it, very. Weird, it can yeah. be weird for refs because they the fencing response can be mistaken in some situations for a defensive posture. Like they're still going, they're still defending themselves, maybe I'm trying to hold you off, but that's not what happens. You know, I'm just out cold with one arm. <laughs> you know who I feel bad for in ultimate fighting is like the guys who have embarrassing fencing responses. <laughs> like some, some of the guys like fully erect, torqued. You're like, that guy's out. That's a, it's a turgid, powerful response. Some of them look like they're like casting spell. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, down. it's like dude that guy's got a bitch fencing response and everybody's laughing at poor you. guy with a limp wristed <laughs> fencing response lost and he sucks yeah. to your point about the anxiety like I, I haven't had a panic attack so far but I, i've had like stress in my life and the biggest stresses are when i'm not the solution right like like if i'm managing someone and my team has this problem or if if it's just out of my hands if it's someone else's decision if i can work and fix it then that's not the stress level that that's not my big problem you know that that puts me in work Mm -hmm. mode if i'm just waiting to see what someone else deals my way that's crushing that's so hard to work with Mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly exactly the same and I've, i've heard that's pretty common that like the difference between there's a there's a book about Oh, fuck, I don't know what's called the upside of stress. I don't remember. But apparently a lot of the traditional thoughts of stress are supposedly incorrect, that being stressed is bad or being stressed for long periods of time is bad, that we always think this because cortisol is, is negative. Mm-hmm. But supposedly, the, the argument that this book made, I've had a friend summarize this book to me and then I read a few paragraphs. I don't know the whole book. But supposedly mm-hmm. the, the argument that this book goes on to make is that stress is only bad when you feel stressed and you don't have the tools to deal with it. And when I think back to a lot of my life, I have, because a lot of people always ask me, like, oh, how do you deal with stress, blah, 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 blah. And like, I just, by the nature of how I've come up, like I've always kind of been on my own and figuring things out. Like if I've got like some stressful events, they usually are all like problems that can be solved. And it's like, that's like a, an exciting thing for me. Like, holy shit. Like I just got banned on Twitch. Like where else can I make money from? Like, do I need to start doing mm-hmm. shirts? Do I need to go back to building computers? Like, can I push my YouTube harder? Like, well, what are platforms kind of streaming out? Like, it's usually like, okay, well, what can we do to solve the problem and move forward? And that can be like exciting. As long as you feel like you have the tools to deal with whatever adversarial thing is presented to you. I don't think the stress mm-hmm. is usually as bad. Sometimes it can spur you on to like some kind of greater action. Yeah. Titus, yeah, if you never got com- stressed, you wouldn't get anything done. Uh-huh. Yeah, Titus, the comedian, I think we've had him on the show. He yeah, has this did. routine. I can't deliver it like he does, but he's like, you know, people are worried about anxiety. That's how the mortgage gets paid. And somehow that burned into my head. Like, yeah, sometimes actually that that that's how the mortgage is paid. I've got a little anxiety. I got to get shit done. Uh-huh. It's motivating. Sometimes. Yeah. To be clear, the long-term anxiety that could come about of just being perpetually fucked in life, though, is not a good. <laughs> like I, the anxiety that I have now as a streamer is always exciting because I've got a plethora of options available to me. Um, Twelve years ago, when I was falling behind on my house payments, when my ex-girlfriend was pregnant, and when my job fucking sucked, that anxiety was not good. I didn't feel spurred on to action. I just felt like my life was completely fucking over, and there was nothing good about that. So there are differences. It totally depends on like where you're at in life in terms of like what can feel exciting. I understand. Yeah, that for sure. I'm, I'm interested in what you said with. Uh... You said like up till 30, you were rock solid. You never really had stress, anxiety issues. And then you did a bunch of mushrooms. Usually yeah. you hear like the Joe Rogan kind of crowd being like, oh, you got to do this to recenter and get your cheat. I don't know the language. Upgrade like, your like, RPG character permanently. <laughs> yeah, something like whatever whatever Joe Rogan <laughs> yeah. would say. So like what you, you didn't experience that at all. Did you have a really bad time? And I mean, I upgraded myself. I, I unlocked a whole set of feelings and emotions that I didn't know existed. But the problem is a lot of those are negative. <laughs> 
So <laughs> because like up until that, like I'm serious, I've just I've never been depressed or I've never had anxiety. Like I, I didn't even know have a concept of what was out or like anything like that. Um, basically, just like uh, or go ahead. What were you saying? No, so I was saying that's wild that you never experienced that. And then was it shortly after you did all the mushrooms you started to experience this? Um, no, it was like three months later actually. I did, um, and it almost, I, oh, it almost seems like maybe they were disconnected, but I have a hard time believing that. Um, I, so basically I had one trip where, um, I'd smoked a bit, I'd eaten some edibles and I, I, I was like, okay, mushrooms must be like weed, I guess, maybe a little stronger. So I just, I ate an, a stupid amount of mushrooms. <laughs> and then I had like an unimaginably fucking insane, like life changing, life altering trip that is indescribable in, in, in any words that I can think of. And then three months later, um, I was downstairs and I was sitting at my desk. And I wish I could describe this better, but I'm just, I'm sitting at my desk and just, I'm not doing anything. I have no mm -hmm. stress right now. My life is fine. I'm, I'm thinking like doing emails or something dumb. And all of a sudden I just feel like this little, like, oof, like this little tick. And I'm like, oof, that was weird or whatever. And I remember thinking exactly at that moment that I'd had a friend that had described panic attacks and we make fun of them all the time. for like, you're such a loser who gets panic attacks. Or <laughs> I remember thinking like, oh my God, like, wouldn't that be funny if I was getting a panic attack after making fun of him for years for it. And then in the next <laughs> second, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then in the next second, I was like, oh, something is happening. I wonder if I'm memeing myself into a panic attack. Like, this is really dumb. I'm going to just get up and go upstairs because something is happening. And then the process of me standing up and starting to walk up the stairs, I this horrible feeling of dread just like washes over me. And I guess I, I, supposedly I was hyperventilating, but I don't remember any of this. I just remember walking up the stairs and feeling absolutely certain that I was about to die. I walked upstairs, I sat on my couch, and it was just the most horrible fucking feeling in the world as I just sat, like, sat there like staring into nothing, like feeling like so absolutely fucking horrible. And that was like my, my first ever panic attack set off by nothing and just... Yeah, ugh. yeah, that sounds Jesus. awful. This doesn't sound like an upgrade at all to me. Like, no, oh, I well, upgraded. Upgrade. I learned about weight gain and gray hair and weakness. Um, <laughs> the big, no, the biggest, I don't know how deep we want to run down the philosophy. The biggest upgrade that I got was right. at one part of my in one part of my trip. So there's a feeling called um, there's a there's a term called ego death. And what ego death is, is that if you consume enough of certain psychedelic substances, what happens is, is that you kind of have like an operating system that runs your reality. And if you take enough of a certain drug, you can kind of break down your upper level associations with that. And it gives you the chance to kind of, I'm going to say step back, but kind of like see like, oh shit, like everything I see normally in life is like super filtered through all of my senses or whatever. I'm trying to explain this in the least like super mm -hmm. druggy jerk off way possible, right? But that's essentially what yeah. it is. Like imagine you're watching like your whole life is looking through your phone and then you have ability to like kind of like step like a foot back from that and see like, whoa, holy shit. Like everything I see is like filtered through this experience and now I'm breaking that down a little. Mm -hmm. And I remember that during that experience, um, there's one part where I'm kind of like sitting down on a couch and throughout this entire six hour trip, I keep having the thought, I did way too many mushrooms. I broke through into figuring out what actual reality is. I wish I could just go back. This is so fucking horrible. I took way too many mushrooms. I didn't want to come here. I made a mistake. I am not, I'm actually not ready for the real reality. And the one thing that I took away from that, that trip was that, that kind of like very, visceral thought um, i'm a big like debate lord brainiac intellectual whatever you like the oh youtube whatever um going into that trip my prior to that in my life i always would have thought that like knowledge or intelligence is something that should be desired for sake of itself like knowledge is just good by virtue of it being knowledge and then coming out of that trip what i realized was holy fuck there might actually be some things that even if they're true i don't know if i would actually want to know them like i prefer the fake reality of whatever this life is to the truth reality of like sitting in front of a tv that is the center of the universe that was like mushrooms so maybe actually knowledge in and of itself isn't good it's only knowledge that you can acquire that can make you happier so that was like my big takeaway from that this is going down a very far road but that was like my big oh. takeaway from that experience yeah I love it. Um, did you have a mushroom tour guide when you took it? Like, it, it, I'm always told that if you're going to do something like this, you find an expert who makes sure your dosage is right, makes sure you have a good experience. Did you do that? <laughs> I'm so incredibly arrogant, okay? I just am very arrogant. Um, my goal was I wanted to have the worst trip possible. So what I did was All there right. were two strangers and then a couple of kind of friends that I had, um, one of which was very persistent. Um, I did it in an un unknown environment, and then I took three times the recommended like big trip dose to just fucking blast my mind because I was like, I'm probably just going to get really high. And no, so I didn't have like any anything like that. And it was a, yeah, it was the, the worst possible way that you could approach a trip like that. And because some people will listen to me describe it and like, oh, this sounds cool. Like I should do it. Um, if I would have more responsibly kind of dosed myself into having like good trips, I think I could have gotten all of the knowledge that I have now without like all of the horrible mental side effects that I seem to suffer afterwards for at least a year or two. Um, but yeah, a that year was, or yeah. two. So what would you call this like 2017? 
Um, fuck. I posted a video of my trip on YouTube somewhere, but I think it was a couple. I think it was a couple years ago. It was like 2018, 2019. Um, so I'm about two and a half years, I think, away from that experience right now. Yeah. Wow. That's heavy. But like every now and then, I'll get like, I'll get like a bout of like, um, I guess so. So for some examples, there, there are three like distinct things I remember. So in one thing, there I had a period of like three days. And now this might be where it feels bullshit because I'm tying this back to my mushroom experience. It might not be. Maybe it just randomly happened after I did mushrooms. There was a period of three days where I um, had like what I can only describe as like general anxiety disorder, like this weird general anxiety about the world. I am I am like a relentlessly confident person. The most I know, I feel very good about myself, my life and everything. Um, during this three day period, I saw the text log. I'm like texting my kid's mom saying like, hey, like, I need you to keep my kid away from me for the rest of my life. Like I'm a horrible person. Like don't ever let me see him again. Like, but like I was just like unbelievably. And even looking back on this, like what the fuck is happening in my head? Um, and then I had another like very, very short period. It was like two or three days of like an experience of an absence of desire, which is actually the scariest fucking thing in the world. Um, when you don't want to do anything and you don't have a desire to want to do anything. Um, and I think that these two experiences gave me such a new perspective on mental illness. I had so much more respect for people that suffer with that on a daily basis um i've always been a person who it's like hey you know if you're prescribed an ssri you know do that in therapy you should do whatever you know you need to to, to fix your problems blah, blah blah but personally i would never take an ssri because like my mind is too strong for that i don't want to change myself blah, blah 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 when i was experiencing like these two states i would have fucking lobotomized myself or taken any fucking drug or done anything i needed mm -hmm. to break that because like when you're yeah yeah it was just a horrible horrible thing i one of the one of the takeaways i have of like the human mind is i used to think that like 10% of your brain is like this weird underlying, you know, like subconscious mood shit. And then like 90% is like, these are your active thoughts. This is what you have control over. And I totally flipped that in and of itself, like to where now it feels like there's this whole under part of your mind that you are not really aware of. And then you kind of, you think a little bit on top, but a lot of the credit goes into this lower stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it does you well to understand that because um, you need to do what you can to fix that stuff rather than just like think like, oh, well, I can just be positive forever and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Would you recommend it to people to try hallucinogens or do you think it was a net negative, at least for you? I would absolutely recommend it. It's a, I'm, I'm disappointed that I was 30 before. It's a whole other world. If you do psychedelics and you should do them responsibly, but when you've been on a big trip, it is, it is just nothing will ever, you're, it's like a whole other world. It's the close you, you, it's unbelievable. It's unimaginable. It's unbelievable. It's nothing like being high. It's just like, I can't explain it. I can't. For those that have done it, they, they'll, they'll know. And then if you haven't, like, it sounds really stupid. And I mean, like, I, I hope I'm like, scary. it sounds it scares is. the shit out of me. So like, I feel like I, 18 out of 20, 19 out of 20, have my shit together. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, you want to re-roll? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. That sounds like a bad idea. I mean, it's not going to like change you completely. Like, I think I'm more or less the same. Like, if you watch videos of me now and three years ago, like I'm still this rambunctious, loud asshole, blah, 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 blah. I just, it it gives me more perspective, I guess, which is good. I think gaining more perspective is always a positive. So. What do you know? Joe Rogan knocks it out of the park with his hallucination <laughs> recommendations. You know what? I, he likes Stevia now. That son Shrooms of a bitch was even... right about Stevia. <laughs> <laughs> Except shrooms aren't even as intense as he goes. Or I don't know the stack ranking of intensity, but he like talks about ayahuasca, which I think is cactus juice that you drink. A lot of it depends. Yeah, a lot of it depends on dosages and everything as well. Like mushrooms or LSD can be very, very, very intense. Like I'm pretty sure a big mushroom or a big LSD trip can be similar to like a DMT trip. Except mushrooms or LSD are worse because you can because those last six hours or twelve hours respectively. Whereas for DMT, it feels like a long time, but fifteen minutes and you're in and out. But like, yeah, ayahuasca and DMT are not the same thing, right? I think Correct. DMT is an extract from ayahuasca, isn't it? Am I wrong on that? I wouldn't. Oh shit! Oh, maybe that's how they get it. I thought DMT was its own hyper intense. They thing. sound totally different. The, I'm I, sure I, of it. They are different. You know? <laughs> okay, wait, I'm just, now I would sound like full of shit if I said so. Ayahuasca contains large concentrations of DMT, around 80 milligrams per 100 milligram infusion, and may cause visual hallucinations. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So ayahuasca is much different. The experience is a lot different than DMT. Like I think this is like a day long thing. You like purge from your body. You vomit and all this stuff to do like your big trip. Whereas DMT is generally smoked, and you do like two or three big hits, and then you have your huge breakthrough moment, and it's like 15 minutes in and out. I have what a couple friends. What was that, that drug we were watching? Or all of us, we were watching a long time ago. This drug where people would go into the Amazon and they would like That's scrape. Ayahuasca. Was ayahuasca. that ayahuasca? That's it. I have a bunch of friends that have done ayahuasca. It's, 
it's oddly popular in the paragliding community to do like go places and smoke ayahuasca. <laughs> People with so much money, they Drink. don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.